good so this is called gui mapping right for example uh, everywhere you could you go here you will see a text at the same time a dollar sign everywhere you will see a text and then the dollar sign that means there is an id and at the same time there is a text field so you identify it is like identifying a person you can you always try to identify a person by name then only by the roll number of a student right so if you go to a college if you want to have a person you first ask the name then you will ask the roll number also right if there are more people with the same name so it's always like name first then the other numbers next now so first again this webinar is going to give you the basics of silk test silk test is again another version we can take 20 hours of webinar in silk test itself you have to get evaluation copies for practicing if you want to purchase you have to talk to borland this is the product of borland okay so you can download from that it is ocean there are a lot of things to think uh, to talk about silk test but only thing is if you are able to grasp this idea after that it is only you are referred to do that incremental learning and these are all fundamental concepts that everyone should know when they come into the silk test automations okay <clears throat> now just hold on a second now the next thing that we want to cover is the scripting part okay this is the scripting part the scripting part again i am going to cover a little bit today and then we will be taking tomorrow also what does it mean any automation simple recording and replaying alone is not sufficient okay for example i want to do this operation five times okay just this alone okay this portion if i do it five times what will happen someone wants to do that part okay i want to go and then feed the data into the replace box and then do it what will happen again you cannot say to the tester uh, why are you doing this this the example may be like book 50 tickets continuously in that system see what happens is application crashing is it slowing down right repeat certain things the fundamental thing in any scripting will always start with the repetitions okay this is a comment now if you want to have repetitions i need to have some counters for that i need variables we can have different types of variables so the scripting is a full fledged programming the programming is for test syntax so first thing is to declare variables all you need to do is you have to exactly like c language int okay i am having an integer i you don't have to give semicolon okay integer i suppose you want to define a string variable you can say string yes suppose you want to define a boolean variable you can say boolean boolean means true or false on or off right b so i am defining three variables there are a lot of other types of variables right i can have so many other variables the tons of variable types but most of the times you'll be using int you can also use real right real r most of the times we'll be dealing with the integer string boolean and real variables so first define the variables okay now if i want to initialize a variable okay if i want let me just uh, delete all these things if i want to initialize this variable all i need to do is i equal to 0 exactly like any other language you can do that okay now very first thing print something on the window variable declaration is very easy print something print hello world 
command is print within bracket hello open mentor audience right I do that now I want to print the value of print I right the moment I do that if I want to execute this run the test case right I am running it just watch it runs it opens up a window when it opens up a window it shows something test case one passed now it says when you expand that it shows whatever you want to print it. this is the result file you could see over here yes one dot res that res is for result extension okay right so you say hello whatever print message that you have given that comes over here the value of i comes over here now i am closing the result window right a print command will always go to the result window now i want to repeat simply i want to repeat to do that is exactly like c you can say for within bracket i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus okay now the moment i do this it shows an x mark over here as a syntax error if there is a syntax error it will show x mark now i put that close bracket that syntax error goes off in for test there is nothing like for next or open bracket close bracket like c all you need to do this indent what is the body of the for loop I am saying these two things must be under the for loop then all I need to do is select these two lines indent move to the right just watch I move to the left they are all in the same level I move to the right you could see an expand collapse button if I click on it the for loop is collapsed now it is expanded this is the body of for loop people who are familiar with Python right uh, then one more thing is one person is asking it is case sensitive or not to my knowledge it's not case sensitive right suppose I go here but for the keywords it is case sensitive even for the variables I'm, I'm sure that it is going to be case sensitive okay suppose I type the here let us check that out I declared only small i but I have not declared a capital I now I'm trying to execute right uh, this one if I try to execute it is showing me variable i is not defined as a syntax error so it is showing variable definitions definitely they are case sensitive some of the keywords are not uh, case sensitive but many key other executable keywords are still case sensitive right so I would keep it better to be case sensitive because variables will have issues when you don't when you mix case sensitive and case insensitive variables so if you want to have a body or a block all you need to do is indent now I have made this now if I execute this okay if I execute this test I run so five times it has to print it right now it shows the result file probably it will take a little bit time for your screen to refresh now if I expand look at this it has printed this five times hello open mentor audience once twice thrice fourth time fifth time so the fundamental repetition is for loop but the key here is you don't put open bracket and close bracket or begin and end like in Oracle or you don't do for next all it requires is just indentation okay the moment I indent it becomes a block is this clear to you all we saw comments we saw simple variable declarations and initializations we saw printing we saw for loop and indentation very fundamental commands in scripting is this clear great now before moving to the 
next one within the scripting itself right there are different types of printing also right now i am printing when i print it comes in blue color right there is some some other method called okay there is a command called log warning right log warning there is a message now i am going to print a message uh, this is a warning message okay before starting the loop at the end of the loop i am going to say log error okay i am going to say log error this is an error okay let me execute this see what happens it executes just watch if you use print statement it is printing in blue color if you use log warning it is showing in purple color if you use log error it is using in red color so that in the output file it will be very very clear for the tester right to distinguish whether it's a message whether it's a warning whether it's an error pretty much in qtp you will have this uh, services right reporting services same like log warning because finally after the tests are run i want to see whether it's an error because it's it has to be helpful for uh, troubleshooting so this log warning and log error and print are used to put the messages into the result file this is one small part now there is another kind of a variable okay let me delete this portion there is another type of a variable again you have got arrays and lists there is something called list okay for example i have something called type list list l okay i have a variable type called list l suppose i say print the value of list l let me execute this let us watch when i execute this see here a list in the result file i'm i'm giving a little bit gap by the time i run so that your screen will refresh okay initially it is empty a list is shown within two curly braces now it is empty i want to add an element to the list right list are also like arrays okay i want to add an element you can always use there is something called a list append right list append i want to give the list name l then what you want to add i want to add for example um, hello i want to add this element to the list now i want to do the same thing repeat hello hello 1 hello 2 hello 3 i am adding three elements to the list okay now i want to add instead of hello i want to add say another element called 40 now at the end i am going to say print the list now now i run it just watch the moment i run it is showing initially the list was empty now the list is having first element is hello one second element is hello two hello three hello 40 right what is the use of list many places people use arrays instead of using arrays you can use lists because you can keep on adding elements to that so append append you can do that this is one point another area is list provides one more thing for example if i have 40 then uh, let me cut and paste this i have uh, 20 i have got 10 right there is something called list sort okay i am trying to give list sort l okay print l there's a command called list sort now let me try to run this okay there now uh, okay there is a command mismatch 
occurred in list match. There is an error that has come into the list match. Sorry, list sort. Sort. Let me see. L equal to list sort. I am trying to assign the same list. Let us try to run it. Okay, there is a syntax error. Hold on a second. Probably there may be a simple. If you put an open bracket, right? If you put an open bracket, it shows the uh, parameters also. For example, I say list sort, that's L, right? Now, I'm trying to say, again, the second parameter is optional with respect to Boolean. Now I'm saying true, okay? Now let us try to sort. I'm going to give uh, just 40, 20, and 10. Now I'm trying to sort this list, okay? See what happens. Now, Initially, the list was 40, 20, and 10. Now, since I gave the parameter true, it is sorting in the ascending order. If I give false, it will uh, sort it in the descending order. Now, it is sorting it in 10, 20, 40, right? Previously, the error used to, the, the error came because I was giving string as well as number variables, so there is a problem in sorting. That's why it was giving the error. The list append and list sort, right? It is one of the key things because I want to sort so many things quickly maybe 100 student records in a quick time. List is very powerful. When you are using list, you don't have to worry about the subscript going beyond the subscript, etc. So it will minimize a whole lot of uh, issues for you. Is this clear? The list command. Okay, can you please raise the hands? Cool. Great. Now, so list is most of the times preferred over arrays. Again, you can use arrays also. We'll come to the array a little bit later, maybe tomorrow. The next thing that I want to show, again, uh, Boolean variables like B, uh, wherever you want to give true or false, or on or off, one or zero, you can use Boolean variables, mainly for flags. Okay? You'll be using it. Now, there is one more thing called list, I think, count, okay? If you give list count, for example, I say list count. Now I say i equal to list count of L. Print i, right? Again, you can give the string the number of elements in list is comma i. Now I am giving the same line. I am giving a comma and then I. Let us watch. I run this. I am going to the result file. I am opening the result file. In the result file, you will see the number of elements in the list is 3. So it is when you give element A, comma, element B in the print statement, it will be displayed on the same line. List count will return the number of elements in the list. This is a command, pretty much like array, uh, array bound, right? 